Well, this poem was written about a, an old slab hut I saw on the road to Coonabarabran, going over a, a short cut, and uh, it was back in the days when I was playing footy out in the bush, and I went back and saw it years later, 30 or 40 years later, and it's still there, a simple slab hut, and I re uh, on the edge of a, uh, would have been a creek, if there was any water in it, but it was dry, and there was a sucker growing in the middle of it, and I suddenly realised that that was way out of town, in the bush, and it was someone's home. Might have been 100 years back, 80, 100 years back. And I sat down and I wrote this poem while I was having a sandwich and my cup of tea under the, in the shade of an ironbark tree in that dry gully. It was a, a, an unsealed road just like that over creek beds. And this is the poem that came out. Echoes from the Past. It's the name of my second CD there, Echoes from the Past, because that poem's on it. Beside a dusty road out back, beyond any town or pub, I saw this old abandoned shack almost buried in the scrub. As I knelt in that scrub and fern there beside the dried up creek, I wondered just what I might learn if those walls could only speak. Of a land so unforgiving, of the hardships that people face as they strive to scratch a living from this godforsaken place, of city politicians who don't seem to understand making all the wrong decisions driving good men off the land. Would they tell of sheer rejoicing as each precious child was born, of hard men opinions voicing in those sheds when sheep were shorn, or tales of deprivation, of the heat, the dust and flies, of the utter isolation beneath endless Asia skies. For soaking rain the farmer yearns, instead of droughts and frosts, each year he sees his poor return swallowed up by savage costs. The grass along the creek turns brown, lies there withered, dry and dead, and when the price of wool goes down, black bank figures turn to red. Of searing heat out on the plain when families just can't cope, then clouds that hint of soaking rain to ignite the flame of hope. Teenage sons and daughters, and sometimes the farmer's wife, walking out for calmer waters and a taste of city life. And those headstones in the graveyard, near the fruit trees, by the well, like silent soldiers standing guard, what sad stories might they tell? Perhaps ones of generations who were born here, lived and died, spurred on by expectation, sheer hard work and stubborn pride. It's years since I first saw that shack, and because I'm getting old, today I made the journey back and felt all those years unfold. I'm feeling sad, I must confess, because that dusty shack's been sealed, as the shack makes way for progress with all its secrets unrevealed. Echoes from the past. Thank you, mate. Righto.